four habits. One that builds your mind, one that builds your body, one that builds your business, one that builds your relationships. The good life is the process of becoming everything you could be. All right, so we are back with another video. And today we are gonna to try recreating this video instead of Davinci Resolve as easily as possible. And if you go to the video, you can see that the video kind of starts as a beginner level animation and it goes to intermediate and then to advanced and later to pro. And creating all of this will take a little bit of time. So I'm going to convert this video into three parts or four parts so that it will be easier for others to follow. Also, the project file for this video will be there in the description so you can download them and see it for yourself. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, do check that out. So let's get started with the video. Our video is just going to be 12 seconds long. So I'm just going to drag and drop an adjustment layer from over here to the canvas like this. And you can access this area by going towards our FX panel, which is this one. Then on the FX tab, you will see this adjustment layer over here. Let's select our adjustment layer one more time and extend its length to like this much so that it will cover the entire part of our video. And also I'm just going to rename this as Danco motion graphics video. Now we are going to delete this footage file and I'm just going to keep our adjustment layer over here. After that, let's right click on our Danco motion graphics adjustment layer and select open in fusion page. If you do that, you will have a canvas like this. But for better representation, what I'm going to do is to go to its our setting like this. And then I'm going to uncheck this use vertical resolution box so that our video will be in landscape mode. I did this step because you guys can now see everything a little bit more clearly and there won't be much confusion which is happening on our screen. Now what we need is to actually open our media pool. And from there, I'm going to drag and drop our reference video, which is this one. I'm going to rename this to Danco. After that, let's close the media pool. Open a secondary window by going over here and clicking on these two boxes. And then we can see that there is a new window over here. We can drag and drop our Danco video to the left hand side like this. Let's go to the very first frame and see what happens. And over here, we can see four rectangles moving to the center of our screen like this. And after that, they regroup to form a circle, which is this one. Then they do this 45 degrees of rotation like this. After that, we can see these four circles which are moving to the center like this. And also in the end, we can see a triangle. And after that, there is a small circle in the center. And all of these rectangles moves to make this dumbbell kind of shape. So I guess we can try creating our video till this much. And all of this is going to be a 2D scene. The only 3D element that I can see in this video is right over here where it forms a box. So for now, we're going to keep everything as 2D as possible. So let's start the video. Our first four elements are our rectangles. So I tried duplicating this and making this animation, but it's not going to work because in between we have all of this animation happening and creating these four rectangles are going to give us more control over them. So it's better to make these four rectangles. And for that, we need a background node. I'm going to connect this to a media node like this. And this background node is going to act as a dummy layer. So I'm just going to take the alpha value all the way down to zero. After that, I'm going to add the real background node over here. And in order to create a new merge node, what you have to do is to just go to the right hand side of our background node where the square is seen. Click over here and drag it to the background node like this so that it will create a new merge node like this. I'm going to keep it over here. And then I'm going to also add a transform node. And I guess this transform node is going to control most of our animation. So this one is really important. And also it's better to rename this transformation node to something like transform rectangle one or like transform R1. Now, in order to create an actual rectangle, we need a rectangular node like this. I'm going to connect this to our rectangle nodes mask. And then let's change the background color to a white color so that it will be visible on our black screen. After that, let's go towards our rectangle, uncheck this solid box and increase the border width a little bit like this. And for now, I'm just going to disable our show control option, which is this green box. And in order to disable that, let's go towards the three dots, which is over here. And I'm going to uncheck this show control option. Now let's add guides on both these windows and for that let's go to the first window like this. Click on the canvas and use the short key which is Ctrl plus G. If you do that we will have a guide layout like this which will actually make our workflow a little bit more easier. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click on the canvas, click on Ctrl plus G. Now let's resize our rectangle and for that let's take the width value to the left hand side like this. And also we can decrease the height. I'm going to move the rectangle to the left hand side like this. And I think it's better to take the width value a little bit down like this and also the height. After doing that, our first rectangle is done. Now let's copy all of this and paste it one more time and add it to the stream like this. Now, if we go to a submerge 2 and change the center X to the left hand side like this, we will have our second rectangle, which is this one. We're going to do this two more times. So again, I'm going to paste this and add it to the stream and move it to the right hand side like this. And we can do this one last time. And after repositioning all of that, we have four rectangles on our screen. 
The next step would be to animate this. And if you look at our animation, we can see that these two are having the same animation and also these two are having the same animation. The only difference between all of them is time delay, which is happening between the first, second, third and fourth rectangle. You will understand what I meant by that in a while. But before that, let's rename all of this. So this one is trans R2, this is R3 and this is R4. Now R1 and R3 are having the same animation as well as R2 and R4 are having the same animation. But R1 is the first one coming and R4 is the last one coming. So let's see where the animation starts. So the animation starts right at this seventh frame. So on the seventh frame, let's go towards our transformation node, which is this one. And I'm going to take the center Y all the way up like this so that our rectangle won't be visible on our screen. And then I'm going to add a keyframe over here. And let's see where the animation ends. So right at the 25th frame, our rectangle comes to the center. So let's animate that. And for that, let's change the Y value to 0.5 so that our rectangle will be in the proper center of our screen. And if you look at the reference video, we can see that the rectangle falls all the way down like this. And also it bounces back a little bit to the top. And over here, the rectangle goes all the way down like this. And then it slightly bounces to the top like this. And this one is where the animation ends. So right at the 30th frame, I'm going to take the center Y a little bit to the top like this. And if you pre your animation, this is what we'll have. We can anyway smoothen this out. And for that, let's open the spline window and let's turn on our transform R1 curves. And if we click on this zoom to fit option, which is this one, we can see this curve which is happening. What we can do is to select this curve like this and hit S. And also we can select these curves and again hit S. And if you pre your animation, this is what will happen. And that is actually perfect. So our first animation is done. The next step would be to animate our second element, which is our second rectangle. And for that, let's go towards our first transformation node, which is this one. I'm going to right click right over here and click on copy. And then let's go towards the second rectangle, which is this one. And over here, I'm just going to right click again and click paste. If you do that, both of these will have the same animation, which is not what we want. We need to tweak the settings. And for that, what we need to do is to actually open our spline window. So I'm just going towards the spline window like this. And make sure you turn on the second transformation node, which is trans R2. And let's figure out where the animation starts. And if you preview animation, we can see that our first rectangle comes right over here on our reference video as well as on our main video. And we can only see the second rectangle on our 15th frame. So if you move our playhead to the 15th frame like this, we can see the second rectangle actually showing up. So the frame just before, which is the 14th frame, is a start animation for our second rectangle. So what I'm going to do is to actually select all of these curves. And if you do that, this will be our animation, which is also a little bit slow. So what we can do is to actually pull it a little bit back. So I'm just going to choose like 10th frame as a start animation. And now if you preview animation, this is what we will have. Now let's do the same animation for the third as well as the fourth rectangle. And for that, let's go to the second rectangle. Right click over here, copy. After that, click on the third rectangle. Come over here and click on paste settings. We can also do the same thing with the fourth rectangle. So I'm just going to paste settings one more time over here. Now let's see where the third rectangle animation starts. So right over here, the animation starts. So I'm just going to open spline window, go towards trans R3, which is this one. I'm going to click on it and move it to the right a little bit like this. So we need a little bit of that rectangle over here. So I'm just going to keep it on the 13th frame right over here. Now I'm going towards the fourth rectangle, which is this one. And let's check the playhead and see where the animation starts. So right over here, the animation starts. So I'm just going to select all of the curves of our fourth rectangle. And I'm going to move it to the right hand side like this. And now if you preview animation, this is what we will have. Now if we go towards this frame, we can see that on our reference video, all the rectangles are placed in the center. But on our main video, that's not what's happening. And in order to fix that, we can go towards our second rectangle, which is this one. I'm going to select these curves. And then I'm going to select this zoom to fit option. After that, I'm going to select this handle and move it a little bit up like this. And this one is kind of okay. After that, let's go to our third rectangle, which is this one. And we can do the same thing, which is select these two curves and take the handle a little bit up like this. Now let's go to the fourth rectangle and do the same thing. Now, if you preview animation, this is what will happen. Now on the second rectangle, let's select these two curves and move it a little bit closer like this. And this will be our preview. We can do the same thing with our third curve, which is this one and also the fourth one. And with that, our first animation is kind of done. The next step would be to make our rectangle form this circular kind of shape, which is this one. And for that, let's exit our spline window. And after that, let's add one more transformation node over here. And this transformation node will control the rotation of our rectangle. So as per our reference video, the first rectangle will go towards our left hand side like this. And in order to do that, let's see where the animation starts. 
So right over here, the animation starts on the 32nd frame. So I'm just going to add a keyframe on the center X and Y on our transformation, which has been connected to our Merge 2 node. And this one controls our first rectangle. So I'm just going to add a keyframe over here. And then let's see where the animation ends. So right over here, the animation kind of ends, which is at the 56th frame. So on that frame, I'm just going to move the center X to the left hand side like this. And also I'm going to keep it in the center like this. And this will be our animation. Right now it's a little bit slow, but we can fix that later. Now let's add one more transformation node on the second rectangle, which is this one. So I'm just going to add a transformation node over here. And from this transformation node, we know the start as well as the end animation. So the start animation is at the 32nd frame and the end animation is at the 56th frame. So on this transformation node, I'm going to add a keyframe on center X on the 32nd frame. Then let's go to a 56th frame, which is this one. And I'm again adding a keyframe over here. And if you look at the second rectangle, which is this one, we can see that it is having a little bit of rotation to it. And in order to create that animation, let's add a keyframe on the angle, which is this one. And don't forget to add this at the 32nd frame as well as the 56th frame. And right now we haven't done any animation to our second transformation node. But in order to save us some time, I'm just going to copy this one and paste it on the third rectangle, which is over here. And I'm going to do the same thing with our fourth rectangle as well. So I'm just going to place one more over here. And you can see that these transformation nodes are having these keyframes within themselves so that it will be easier for us to control. So on the second transformation node, let's take the angle value to minus 90 and let's place it on the center like this. And if you preview animation, this is what will happen. Now on the third transformation node, let's take the center X to the right hand side like this. And this one is not having any rotational changes. So I'm just going to keep the angle value as it is. Now let's go towards our final transformation node, which is this one. And I'm going to change the angle value to minus 90. And also let's reposition it with the center X and Y. So far, this is looking good, but in order to be more precise, what we can do is to add a background node over here. And we can connect it to our merge node like this. Now, if you go towards our background node and go to our image and untick this auto resolution and change the width to 1080. And also go towards our color tab and change the color to a white color. Or let's change this to a red color like this. And now if we add a rectangular mask to it, and if we add an expression to height and take it to our width. And after that, if we move our width a little bit like this, we can see that our rectangles are not placed correctly. Because right now, this is a perfect square, but the distance between these two rectangles are not similar to these two rectangles. And in order to fix that, let's go to our first transformation node, which is this one. And on the 56th frame, let's change the center X a little bit to the right hand side like this. And keep this as similar as possible to this rectangle. Now let's go towards our third transformation node, which is this one. And we can again change the center X to the left hand side like this. And right now we can delete all of this. And only now we are having this perfect pattern. Now let's go towards our spline window. And I'm going to uncheck this transformation R4 node, which we don't need. And we are only going to concentrate on these four transformation nodes, which are these ones. Now let's select all of this. Hit on S. Hit on T to bring in this ease in and ease out box. Now let's change the ease in to like 80%. And if you preview animation, this is what will happen. And for me, this one looks perfect. So I'm just going to keep this as it is. And let's also exit the spline window. Now let's see what the next animation is. So this next animation is a circle animation, which is happening to all these four rectangles. And the animation starts at the 57th frame. And right now we don't need to animate all of these four rectangles individually. What we can do is to go towards our merged one node, which is this one. And on the start animation, which is on the 57th frame, I'm just going to add a keyframe on the angle value, which is over here. Now let's take the playhead to where the animation stops. So right on this frame, I'm going to take this rectangle and place it over here. And for that, let's decrease the angle value until this rectangle is on the left hand side like this. And if you preview animation, this is what we will have. Let's go to a source spline window, uncheck all of our transformation nodes. And we will only have this merge one node, which we just animated, which is this one. I'm going to select this one, hit S and also take the ease into like 80% again. And this will be our result. And so far we have done 25% of this animation. The next step would be to add the circles as well as this triangle. And after that, we will do all of the smooth animations and all of that will be on a part two video. So right now the beginner level to our Danco motion graphics is done. If you want to check out this project file, it will be in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye and take care.